but we're going to be focusing on verses 37, where Jesus references our generation to that of the generation of Noah. Amen. And, you know, as the, as the under-shepherd of this flock, I would be robbing the saints if I did not every now and then discuss the season that we're living in. Amen. It's very important that we pay attention to the season that we're living in. We just spent three weeks on Isaiah chapter 54. We give God praise for what he said to us. And then over those three weeks, right, and, and many of us should be better with understanding of warfare and that there is no weapon formed against us that can prosper. The plan that the enemy has for you and I, it will not prosper. Because God has created a sport. Amen. So we can be confident that as we trust him, he will eventually tear down the stronghold. Amen. The next three weeks, though, the Lord has been speaking to me about moving into 2019 that we really have to develop the spirit of discipleship. Amen. And that um, we are going to shallow. God is getting ready to do some things in this church, but I believe we're going to be a place of refuge. Right? Because that's what this is all about. It's about those out there. Those are, that are trapped outside the ark. Okay. And, 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 and so we, we have to begin to structure our minds to not only shine our light. I mean, you know, we can't be looking like the world. Yes. Amen. Amen. We can't look like the world. We got to do everything not to look like the world. Yes. We need to be separated from the world. We need to be in the world, but not of the world. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's the first thing. Right? Stuff going on on the job. They talking, telling dirty jokes. They bad mouth from the supervisor. You know, we got to, we got to, we got to stand out. Amen. Because we're living at a time right now where we're seeing the gospel, the, the Bible, God's laws and statutes are now diluted. <coughs> Amen. So the next few weeks we're going to be focusing on this thing trapped outside the ark. So if you're there in Matthew chapter 24, we're going to start reading from verse 32. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to summarize, because Matthew 24 is probably the most debated chapter in the New Testament amongst theologians. Right, there's a whole lot being said, you know, this is Jesus' final discourse, and boy, he goes out with a bang here. And it says a whole lot regarding the second coming. And here we are, the generation that could be a part of the coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So every now and then, I would be robbing you as pastor if we don't discuss this. Right? Because there are those who are trapped that are not inside the ark with us. Right? And so if, if we're not doing our part, God can't tear down the strongholds in their lives. Amen? And you saw my sister testify about our brother was so excited to see what God was doing. Amen. Yes. All right. So, but this 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 chapter is powerful. Jesus deals with. I'm going to start reading in a second, but he deals with a lot of things. He talks about that many will come. He gives you signs of what to look for. He says many will come in my name. My God, are there how many? Millions of people are being led by somebody who's trying to take the place of Jesus Christ right now. Many are coming in the name of Jesus Christ and their false God. Aren't you glad this moment that you serve the true and living God? You have no doubt. No matter what you see, you can, you can be in the presence <coughs> of someone who's serving in, under Islam and see them bow down and pray five times. God, I have no doubt that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I have no doubt that, that God put a plan in back in Genesis to crush the enemy's head, to redeem mankind. I have no doubt that I have been transformed by the renewing of my mind all because of the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no way that I am changed without the power of the Holy Spirit. No way. There's no way, there's no psychologist, there's no psychiatrist, there's no way that I am the man I am without the 
indwelling, the infilling of the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is awesome. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But yet now, there are many. He talks also here about earthquakes and, and pestilences in various places. You study earthquakes. We are seeing an increased number of earthquakes. Year in and year out. <laughs> now, we might have some young folks in here that are planning to get married and, you know, and, and, and build a career and different things like that. And I, I want you to stay in that boat because he's a God that blesses. Amen? But at the same time, we cannot be robbed of the season we're living in. We have to be mindful that these are some very serious times that we're living in. And that our Lord and Savior could come back any day. Hallelujah. All right? And then we have, he says, lawlessness in verse 12. I'm going to start reading this, but I'm just summarizing. He says, lawlessness will abound. Do we not live in a lawless society? Yes, we do. Do we not see lawlessness? Right? right? Then he goes on to say in verse 15 that, that when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel. All right? Now, I know that, that sounds heavy duty, but basically the bottom line is in order for this to happen, the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem has to take place. Yeah. This is an event when the most powerful man at, at, at coming, the Antichrist, Right? And I believe the Antichrist is alive today. I really do. They are real close to the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. So this event Jesus is talking about because the Jews will be deceived by this man because he's going to step up and create peace with all the chaos. And, everybody, and, and, and all of a sudden he's going to establish a mark or a code and you're going to have to have this code, but the Jews are going to buy in. And the temple will be rebuilt, and this man is going to walk into the holies of holies. This is a room, a compartment in the temple, and declare, I am God. The abomination which causes desolation. So the Jews are going to stab it. They are real close. To, they have the plans in place to rebuild the temple. What I'm doing is just highlighting some things to show that we are here right now, okay? And then in verse 30, it says it's going to be a sign of the Son of Man. Can you give me that first image? It should be the one of Jesus. Now, I had a vision, and it was during the time, and I've shared that, shared this with you guys. It was at a time when I had vaccinated. I mean, you know, he's a God that didn't give up on me. When I walked away, <coughs> he was good to me. He had delivered me. He had brought me out of the darkness into his light. And you know, the devil put together, formed a plan, and drew me away from the company of God. But God didn't give up on me. And he brought me back. But during that time, I had a dream. And in that dream, I saw Jesus coming back. It was not a dream. It was like a vision. And the glory around him. You want to talk about HD. Folks ain't seen things in high definition when they see the coming of Jesus Christ. Y'all yeah. not here. God got the best high definition you'll ever see. And he's going to show it to the whole world. Yeah. Hallelujah. And here I am. And I ran when I saw him in the sky. And I ran and I was on my knees and saying, Lord, please don't leave me here. And next thing you know, you ever wake up from a dream or a vision and you're surprised you woke up? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, where was I? Like you were somewhere else. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? And, and, and when I woke up, I was on my knees saying, Lord, please don't leave me here. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, is this how you're going to be when I return? Right? So, this image may not look like that, but it's coming. And it could happen on our watch. And, then, and I cannot rob you of this truth. we got to stay seasonal. What is the Holy Spirit doing now? Listen, in our travels, we're trying to prosper. We're trying to do things. We're engaging with family. We're, we're traveling. We're doing, but just be mindful. 
keep it in the back burner that he could come back. And then he said, Amen. I want to be real with my people. Right? We got to be real. You will not be left here and say, Pastor Mike didn't tell us. How many of y'all say, I'm, I'm gone? I know I'm gone. Judgment 
and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people. And look what it says next. A preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. Noah not only was faithful in building the ark, he was proclaiming holiness and righteousness to that generation. Right? And just so you understand, the word preacher now in the Greek, the Greek definition is, this is a messenger vested with public authority to convey official messages of kings, magistrates, princes, military commanders who gave a public summon or demand and to perform various duties. Noah was a preacher. So these people not only watched him building this humongous ark, but he preached God's word to these people. And do we not see what's happening now? People that are in denial, and let's be honest, we were all there. Please let us not forget that we were all there. Right? We all didn't want to hear at one point in time. Right? So, so I read you that scripture, scripture, and then in verse 39, we see a picture of the trap. Can you show me that next picture? This is those trapped outside the ark. Look what it says in verse 9. And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will be will the coming of the Son of Man be. So in other words, they watched Noah build the ark. They listened to him preach the word. Right? And they did not believe it wasn't until the actual flood came. Right? So this is now how cut off the world is from the reality of Jesus Christ. Isn't it sad? That, 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 that we are living in a generation now, I can be honest with you, I would never have denied that Jesus Christ wasn't the Son of God. I just wasn't ready to follow him. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. This generation will fight you. They'll claw at you. Yes. We got organization right now. Atheism right now is, is, is one of the leading rebellious groups against the, the kingdom of God. Right? So what I'm doing now is showing you the trap. The trap is so bad that the realization of what's happening won't happen until we are raptured. So no matter how much we preach, no matter what we do, there are folks that are going to deny it. But your family members, those you are close to, if you will humble yourself and pray, God will heal the land. Amen. If you got kids in here that are lost, because remember now, Noah was the only righteous one. But God honored his family. Y'all hear what the Spirit saying this morning? All right? Trapped outside the ark. I just want to read this word, trap. The definition now. And this kind of hit me. Obviously, it means in a net or to trap for being uh, using a pit. But this word here is to capture or to occupy. And isn't that the real trap of the world? It's, it's being occupied. Yes. Right? So caught up in what we're doing. And it is a trap that you and I have to be careful of yes. in the church. Right? Yes. Because we're, 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 what is occupying our time? Right? We, we, God ought to be in the midst of our, of our, of our time. Yes. I'm not trying to say there's nothing wrong with watching this or going here, but What's occupying our time? The world doesn't want to hear it because the world is occupied. Y'all yes. hear that this morning. Right? All right? They are trapped outside the ark because they're trapped outside the covenant. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to show you this real quick. Now jump over to Genesis chapter 6. Now remember, what is this?